All right, so welcome everybody uh, for another kind of impromptu episode of uh, the Renegade HPG podcast. Uh, my guest today is Cameron Duker, and uh, we are going to be talking about his project, uh, Redline, uh, which is a tactical card combat game. Uh, we connected uh, because uh, Cameron is also a big fan of Battletech, and I've been putting out so much videos about the Battletech trading card game. But yeah, and so we're going to be talking today about uh, about Cameron's efforts uh, with this with this new venture of his and, and getting this game off the ground, and a little bit about the game itself, and kind of because it does tie in and it has a lot of similarities to to Battletech. But uh, my interest, you know, is it, a lot in the entrepreneurial side of things. You know, for those that don't know, kind of for my background. Um, I'm athlete and coach and started a nonprofit uh, in which I have been co was coaching and for the majority of my career. So a lot of experience with kind of that startup, that entrepreneurship and the challenges that are there. Um, certainly uh, my interest in gaming um, is kind of intersecting that and, and various projects that I'm trying to do now. And so I'm very interested in kind of Cameron's experience, both uh, in terms of the game, and I'm interested in kind of hearing more about the game. I'm sure he's interested in sharing it because that Kickstarter is up and live and funding right now. And I, I'm, you know, he'd love to get even more interest uh, in there to to get uh, to get people playing the game. Um, but uh, but I also want to kind of talk about that process because I think a lot of us out here in the gaming world are interested in kind of what happens behind the scenes in terms of creating a game and marketing a game. And, um, and distributing and production of a game, uh, of the games that we all, because it gives us maybe a little bit of insight and maybe a little bit of empathy into the people that, uh, that bring us the, the product that we, uh, we spend so much time with and enjoy. But, uh, but with that, uh, Cameron, uh, thanks for joining me. Um, uh, this is fun. I, I'm looking forward to this. I enjoy this, and thank you for having me on, Travis. Appreciate it. Awesome. So one kind of uh, coming up with the idea, you know, you know, talk to me a little bit of kind of what brought you to, to Redline, kind of what were those initial seeds that, that brought it up and kind of how uh, that process came from idea to, uh, to where you are now and in that process of fruition. Redline has an interesting story in that we actually go back to 2016, and I, I mentioned this before a little bit, uh, but it actually was a, a mobile game back in 2016. Uh, I got bit, so I'm a lifelong gamer, grew up playing Battletech, um, card games, Battletech CCG, Magic, Risk, Axis and Allies, my friends Friday night, everyone else at the football game, we're at my pool table gaming, RPGs, all, all, all that stuff. So I'm, I, my dork card is, is secure. Um, but later in life, I, I, I X-Wing miniatures game. I don't know if you ever played that or knew of it. That's my main game. I got up to 13th in the country playing X-Wing miniatures. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. So I played that, and instantly it brought me to Battletech. Like yeah. oh, for whatever okay. reason, the movement, the miniatures, the, the just the, the the movement focus. My mind is like, oh, this is like an updated version of Battletech, but with spaceships and Star Wars, which I love also. Yeah. But I just kept, man, this is you know a faster, quicker Battletech. And so uh, for whatever reason, I, I was like, man, this would make a great mobile game. I don't know why I connected those dots. But just like a simplified version with the movement. That was mm -hmm. the key thing. Movement is what makes it great. There wasn't. I was angry and upset. Like, why is no one making these little games on a grid or fucking yeah. chess or hexes, but not the, the movement? And if you want something done right, you do it yourself. So, with no experience at all, except being a gamer, uh, I dove right into developing a, a mobile game. <laughs> no background awesome. at all. Awesome. Can't okay. code, no art. No idea what I'm getting into, but was able to get a team, and we actually got an, a playable alpha of, of Redline with 3D models and animations and sound effects, and I'm just flying by the seat of my pants. You don't know what you don't know, and so let's just get it done. Um, but that's where a lot of the concept, the story behind Redline, the models, the, the, the freaks, um, the genesis came from that. That was pretty ambitious, <laughs> and yeah. that ended up falling apart. And so for years, I was salty. Like, you know, we got these. I mean, if you look at our game, the art is first thing people say is amazing because we put a lot of work into it. The freak designs, our our mechs come from an actual BattleTech designer. We were able to get to work with us right away. So like, the game looked awesome, but nothing came out of that. And I was just, you know, one of these days, I'm gonna come back to this, and I'm we're, we're gonna do something. And so. These days now, you know, I'm still a big game where Magic the Gathering is probably my number one vice. Why not combine the two? And so that's where the, the, new, the new version of Redline came from. It's, it's a mixed match of uh, the, the art and ideas from the mobile game combined with games I love today, like Magic the 
gathering, but we really wanted to, I wanted to get that experience when I was a younger kid, of playing on my pool table, miniatures on my house, the tabletop experience. So it's really trying to combine a lot of things together at once, if that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the game is built around movement, uh, but movement with cards. How do you do that as a card game? And still having to be able to flank and to push up the middle and set up ambushes, but still have your deck building and customization. Uh, and the game it does a pretty good job of doing that. So that, that was the inspiration. Awesome. Exactly. And and so is the is the focus currently now purely on on kind of physical cards in the card? Or are you also kind of developing the the uh, the mobile game in the background as well? No, the mobile game is is dead. Gotcha. <laughs> That's yeah. long gone. Um, it's much simpler to do a card game. Hmm. That's my wheelhouse because that's what I like. Like I said, that's I'm a magic junkie right now. Yeah. Um, just the logistics is a lot simpler. I mean, we bit off way more than we could chew with the mobile, and uh, I'm more comfortable with that, and uh, we've had a lot more success. Yeah, yeah. What you know, you mentioned the logistics. You know, because often I've been like, oh well, you know. I wonder why games like Magic don't have a have an online component, though that might be just you know kind of cutting into their main business. But uh, you know, even with with BattleTech, I was like, oh, BattleTech relaunched again. You know, would it kind of be viable as as a card as a as a mobile game? So what were what were those hurdles that you faced, kind of uh, from a development side in the mobile that kind of led you to to look to the tabletop as as the most viable option moving forward? So mobile, I mean. Any, even a mobile game these days, the, the quality, the, the graphic, you know, what people expect is so high. Mm. So just again, you know, with no, ex <laughs> it still sounds weird to say it, but like with no experience at all, trying to, to jump into that, like the deep, it's not even the deep end of the pool. I mean, you're jumping into the ocean at that yeah. point to, to get, you know, 3D models made and to find coders that can, you know, make the game and, and no, but it was just, I don't even know what I was thinking at the time. It was yeah. just excitement and ambition and let's do it. And it's fun. It's fun to yeah. create and develop. It. Uh, but it's just, it's just so much work for buying off more than I could shoot. Card games are much simpler. You can, you can write out the text. You can play test right away. You don't got to wait for the latest build or something. Um, it's much easier to get 2D art and 3D illustrated craft, you know, models and stuff like that. So it's right. again, Logistically, I mean, it's cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> it's much simpler than coding and building and Unity and all that stuff. Yeah, and for you know, for those that have that interest and kind of are, I'm sure there's tons of people out there that are like, ah, oh, you know, I have this game, this idea in my head, you know, that I'd like to do. Like, what's you know, even for for this step here, for getting on the tabletop, you know, what kind of what kind of connections, what kind of uh, networking, what kind of um, relationships have you had to build, and collaborations have you had to build to kind of make this function? Like, who who are the other, who are the, the, the gears, I guess, in the machine uh, that you're using to kind of get this up and going? That's a good question. Uh, and for me, being a nobody in, in nowhere with no experience, and no background, uh, I'm a dime a dozen. There's tons of people, like you said, I got an idea for a game, I got, but, but you got nothing to show for it. And you need to collaborate. You need strong artists. You need marketers. You need a good cop. You need a team. I've done a lot by myself. <laughs> Yeah. I won't say, you know, but you still need people to fill in the gaps. I mean, any business, same thing, right? You, you find the people that can strengthen up your weaknesses. Uh, so my advice, and, and I, I'm a big believer and preacher of this, is that you, you show the most that you can. Ideas are cheap. Dime a dozen. Everyone has them. Nobody cares. You've got to have something tangible. So what I did is I created the assets I could. I created design documents. I created a story. Uh, I, I built uh, art direction and art guides to show people, even if I didn't even have art at the time, but just finding art off the internet that looked like how I envisioned red line to be. Here's my vision, here's what we're going for. And when people can see that, first of all, you've put in the work, you're just, it's not just an idea, but you've invested time and you've created something. And if you're making a game, you're gonna need those things anyways, right? So build up your design docs, I'm going to keep saying that, oh, design docs, design docs, you know, everything you can, detail it out, and then you can share that and show people your vision, and then they can make a decision, like, oh, I can see where you're going, I'm going to pass, or people, you know, this is kind of cool, because there's, there's artists out there, there's creative people 
who are looking for projects that they want to work on. There, there are, um, but again, a lot of people just disrespect their time and, and show them nothing. And of course, they're going to walk and they don't shouldn't blame them. Um, res respect their talent, respect their time, and, and really, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. So put your best foot forward and have something to share, something yeah. tangible to show. You can and get far. Takes yeah, a, yeah. You're going to get a lot of rejection, but you yeah. can get far. You'll be surprised. Um, and the internet is such a level playing field. There's so many people out there. You just got to connect with, find them, and you can get a lot done with a very little amount. Um, now, are you, are, are these people coming on? Are you, are you hiring these people? Or are you finding people that are kind of coming on as partners or sharing? Like how to, and on the financial side, you know, how does that work with kind of bringing on these collaborators? So I haven't shared this openly a lot. There was no need to, um, but my background, I'm in education. I'm a broke, single parent, um, educator, and I live in Arizona, which is like one of the worst states to be an educator. So budget was something I just didn't have. Um, and a lot of entrepreneur, I don't, again, probably you're in that situation. Yeah. Uh, but I had one asset, which was invaluable, and you can't put it, you know, you can't, that's underestimated, I guess I would say, time, right? I had time to make up that difference. Money is kind of a shortcut. You can always buy the help that you don't have. You can buy the assets you need. Or if you have the time, it takes longer, you can invest, you can build it yourself. You can find people, like I said, fill in those gaps you don't have. So with Redline, um, you know, we, you know, we had a little budget for the things we kind of needed quickly, but a, a lot of the game was, uh, I don't know if I should say this, um, next to zero budget. <laughs> just, I didn't have it. Uh, finding people who are hungry, artists who want to build their portfolios and they want experience in the industry. We've got professionals too. We've got a, our art team is awesome. We've got students, hobbyists, professionals. One of them is even in high school still, right? But I mean, they're hungry for opportunities and they want to work on something like this. So you got, you got to find them. You're going to get a lot of rejection, but you can find help if you have something to show. And when you're finding them, are you got, are you just finding their their work that they have online and, and reaching out to them? Are there are the website? I mean, things like Fiverr are certainly out there to kind of you know bring on little. To, I don't even know if you use that, but uh, yeah. Um, uh, I would go hunting. I would go recruiting, yeah. and I would go and look online places like Reddit, Facebook. There's again, people. We share everything these days. So if I find something that was cool, right? Uh, that I think would be a good style of good, and I turn people down. Like I like your work, but it's not really what we're looking at. Yeah. Uh, I would reach out to them. Hey, I'm working on this project. It's called Redline. It's a card game. Here's what we have so far. I show them our assets we have. If you're interested, we can talk about it, and you will get people that will say, "I want to know more. Let's talk. They want to see, and then you can build connections, or maybe they know something. And the more once you start getting assets in, right, yeah. it's like a snowball then you can use those to go and show people here's what we've made and this will and you'll you'll get it will it will build and build on itself you got to start somewhere um, but that's how we were able to do it just reaching awesome. out and, yeah. and then eventually when the snowball gets big enough um you know you will actually have and that's we're at that point now people will, will come to you i found you online oh this looks cool did you need any help and you're like oh of course yes and so it's really building that momentum, building the project. Awesome. And then, um, you know, we connected because I'd been, uh, you know, this is, you know, at its core, certainly a Battletech channel and, and celebration of kind of my fandom there and, and, and happened to kind of get a kick with the Battletech training card game just because I had picked it up recently and had been talking to a lot of the guys about it. But, uh, and, and you as a Battletech fan as well, you know, this, you know, being an inspiration in a, in a lot of ways for this, you know, did you, in the early stages, had, had you considered kind of pursuing something with, you know, the trading card game, getting up and going or getting like a second edition going, or did you go, was the Ifrit um, and the, and the red line kind of a concept that had been there for a long time that had been inspired, but, but that was kind of that ultimate, that ultimate goal for you. Definitely, definitely inspired. Like when, you know, back to the mobile game, the game's got strong battle tech roots. Uh, you know, I keep saying it is a spiritual successor. Mm -hmm. like, this is what I grew up. I, this is what I know. Yeah, you know, I, I was never into Gundam. I liked Robotech a little bit. You know, Battletech is my bread and butter. And yeah. so 
you know, I grew up with the clan invasion, and Takayev, and Aaron Cal, and, you know, that's, that's my gaming DNA. Yeah. So I, I, I can't not make it like that. And we get compliments and detractors mm-hmm. a lot. Well, this is a ripoff, or this, and you know, I take that as a compliment first. Because again, well, the, the we, irony we are our own uh, entity in every way, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I mean, you can only do, you know, a Mac is a Mac is a Mac. Yeah. So there's well, the, definitely that uh, cross pollination. Yeah. Well, the ultimate irony of a Battletech fan calling anything a ripoff is uh, probably lost on the people doing it, but hopefully it's not lost on anybody who really understands and appreciates the order. Uh, no, I mean, you, we, people will tell me all the time, you better watch, you know, Harmony Gold. And, oh, like, Let's not yeah. talk about that. But no, like I said, our, our designs are our own, our lore is our own, our story. Everything is yeah. its own entity. And if awesome. you get that impression, um, like I said, I think we did our job. So Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So the let's talk about let's talk about the Kickstarter and kind of, you know, not only kind of making sure people know that it's there and that, you know, if they're interested in kind of what we're talking about, one, that they need to go to Kickstarter and look up red lines, kind of get that information about it. You know, I'll put some ads and I'll kind of pop up some cards on the video so everyone can check out the art because it is really awesome. And, you know, that was when Battletech, I remember in the in the late 90s when Battletech, the trading card game came out, uh, my like standing memory into the date where I picked it back up was God, this is ugly, you know, just so much, so much bad art. But and, <laughs> and ironically, now that I've picked it up, I have appreciated that the good ones in there because there is a lot of amazing art in there. There's a lot of duds, and give them a little credit, you know, when you're producing 360 pieces of artwork, you know, to get a set, it's hard to kind of be hitting home runs for every time. But, uh, but I do wish, you know, that uh, I do think if. The Battletech, uh, you know, a card game like that came back out. The, the art needs to be party, and that's part of why Magic succeeded. I mean, there were people buying Magic in the beginning that bought it just because they thought the cards were pretty. Um, yeah. You know, for me, in the in the re- the little custom redesigns I've been doing for fun, kind of on the side, um, are really just like find an awesome piece of art and then make a card out of it. <laughs> you know, so yeah. Um, and and you've certainly kind of embraced that. You know, I know I know that the cards look beautiful, and and the kind of the artwork that you've sent me. Uh, you know, looks awesome, you know, from, from beginning to end. And so, you know, that's, uh, you know, it's, it's all, good to see that. I think that we put a lot of work into that. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Yeah. And you said you had like a, a huge team of artists too working on this, did, didn't you say? Uh, I think close to 30 artists wow. from all different backgrounds, all different nations, yeah, yeah. Um, skill levels. And that's something I'm, I'm proud of as we were able, even though it's so varied, if you look, it's still cohesive and mm-hmm. it all belongs in the same universe and yeah and that's something we we the whole idea is to we wanted to punch above our weight we're a very small group and um i have done a lot <laughs> i don't want to say it's a very small group and we've worked very hard to make the game look better than it, than it has any right to yeah um, well, that was, that was, you know, you touched on my, my next kind of compliment for that was that the, the, um, the consistency of the art is impressive. Um, and so, you know, if you go back to that battle tech, you know, there's, and it, you know, it could be a good thing, bad. I mean, even the, the original and magic, you know, they have different artists with the different styles, you know, and battle tech. To be there fair, was definitely, you know, if you go look at old magic cards from that time period, yeah. it wasn't, that art wasn't Not great as. either. <laughs> I think the problem is being Battletech players. We're used yeah. to the great art in the source books and the readouts, yeah. and that. And as you said, the art is kind of that. Um, yeah. It doesn't translate to the trading cards. Um, so but yes. Well, even Battletech had had its origins. I mean, we all have our 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 '80s source books, you know, with their with, the, with their their art that clearly was under a deadline, you know, to get that to like get that book out. But uh, you know, I love. I mean, tech. Tex does a great job with his with his channel at Black Pants Legion. <laughs> I love the videos where they do, where they go through the art and they're just like, you know, uh, just kind of uh, you know running commentary on the various uh, original uh, BattleTech art. But uh, but yeah, but I mean the thing about you know putting out a product now is you know you're not competing against 1997 BattleTech or or 1993 Magic. You know you're competing against 2020 Magic and uh, and uh, you know it looks good. It's fun. It's it's it, it makes a difference to play with attractive cards. Um, it does and uh, again that the bar has been raised I mean gaming is way different than it was back in in the 90s it's Mm -hmm. it's a big uh, business it's it's more popular than ever before and you know if you if you 
you want to compete, you got to meet that level, right? Um, I mean, and if you don't have to, but we wanted to. We wanted to not look mean. We wanted to be slick and polished. Definitely, definitely. Well, let's talk. Let's talk a little bit about the game. You know, t- talk to me about kind of the mechanics and the design. Like, is you know, for for the game design itself, was that you, or did you bring in a game designer to do it? And then, like, talk to us a little bit about what that game design is. What is the gameplay like for for Redline? Redline's very much a Corona baby. Is that um, when I lost my great gaming group for uh, social quarantining, this kind of uh, filled that gap. And so was able to play test with my play group a, a, a bit, but a lot of it was kind of internal and I had tons of time to play test myself and then to get with friends. So we've gone through a lot of iterations, but the core goal was to take the tabletop, the, t- the tabletop experience I had younger when younger and can you put that into a card game? And so a big thing is, you know, terrain and movement. And that's what, you know, X-Wing is going full circle. That's what drew me into that game so much. How can you put movement into a card game? If you've ever played Magic, any, really, any popular card game today, I like to say it's very much like trench warfare, right? You're going in one direction, uh, you're going forward, you're pushing into the red zone towards your opponent, and, and that's it, right? That's, that's all the tactical decisions you have. Are you, are you moving or are you staying? That's it. Red line's different because we actually have a battlefield. We have what's called a mission deck with different objectives. And so at the beginning of each game, daughter cameo, you <laughs> will flip five cards over to kind of make your map. And so that's what you're fighting over. And so you can gain and lose objectives. The goal is to gain all five, uh, but you're fighting over ground. And gaining ground will give you both maybe drawing extra cards or fishing a piece of equipment out of your deck uh, and so again having once that was figured out a lot fell into place pretty no there's you know you got to refine it and look you know values and combat is simultaneous which again i don't think many other card games do but that was important as well because um that was a big part of tabletop gaming again is anticipating your opponent's move and how can you counter that and so in red line, we have dials, which think back to X-Wing. X-Wing, there we go. X-Wing, yeah. okay, here you, you, you set your movements and your opponent does the same time, like a dog fight. You're trying, are they gonna go left or right? Red line, same thing. You plan your missions by planning which objective you're gonna go to. You got one of five options. Your opponent's doing the same thing. And so again, are they gonna go towards the, the, the fallen satellite? Are they gonna make a push towards the city and take that? Can I stop them? And you know, you only have so many resources at your disposal, so you you know you're using them wisely. And and so it's it's I don't say it's like real war, but again, it's tactical. You're planning and anticipating. And so that was to play that with a card game. Uh, it's really fun. Uh, there's a lot of play in the missions and you know building up the, the territory you own. It's kind of like a tug of war. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the rest of it, if you played any card game before, you should be familiar. You got your deck, you draw your cards, uh, you know, they got stats here, they can see that right awesome. there. Armor, speed, um, different types of weapons they can be upgraded with, flavor, taxes, of course, of course. And pilots, weapons you upgrade them with, you got special cards, it can be like maneuvers that you play in combat, so ambush, your headshot, the game has critical hits, that's a big part of tabletop battle tech growing up i've gotten my share of headshots and right. engine hits right you can do that in a red line so you know you can score a crit and you can like lower someone's movement speed or blow off one of their weapons uh but it's again it's all done with cards and it plays fast uh, it plays fun and it really is a merging of those two genres into something kind of unique because what's the point of just making magic with, with max right that's, that's boring to me, and I don't even know if there's an appetite for that. So we really, it really is a war game, but kind of play with cards. Gotcha. And what, you know, from the from the business side of things, you know, what, what are the hurdles in terms of various, you know, copyrights and trademarks for the, the card game and kind of using that and kind of how, how different do you have to be when you're designing to kind of pull apart? Because, you know, I think like, you know, Wizards has like, tapping copyrighted and whatnot and so kind of what do you have to do to make sure that you are you know um 
kind of getting through those legal legal hurdles of, of designing your new game. You need to be aware <laughs> yeah. of what you can and can't say. Uh, tapping, you're right. You, you can still turn a card sideways. You just can't call it. You just say it's activating or something. Or what do you, uh, so what do you red call line, them? Redline, they we were expanding. Okay. So we're expanding. So awesome. Redline itself is not a word that's probably copyrightable. So Redline is a tactical card. Combat. That's, Magic had the same problem when he was playing. They just wanted to call it Magic. And then lawyers are like, yeah, I don't know if you can copyright that. So the gathering got put on as an addendum to that. Um, mechs. Didn't want to, you know, we want to be separate. So we have what are called Afrites. People always ask, what's an Afrit? What's an Afrit? Um, so I'm just going to say it again right here. Uh, it's a mythological demon um, from awesome. like okay. Islamic uh, culture. And you know what? You know, that was a big thing from the beginning. Uh, every sci-fi property worth its salt has a unique name for its robots. Mm -hmm. Gears, Gundams, uh, Mecha, whatever it is. And so we wanted to have, that was one of the very first things we did. Awesome. No, <laughs> we had I love to get it. A, a unique name for our, because we wanted, again, to, to stand on our own. And so Afrit's sounded cool. Um, it's stuck. And I, uh, people like it. Awesome. Oh, I like it. You know, it's definitely yeah. unique. And then it fits into um, the story too. So I mean, there's reason for it. Well, that, that was anyway. my that was my next question. Is like you know, for me, BattleTech is about the lore. Like I love putting Max on the tabletop, but I would say ninety five percent of my my um, you know fandom and my time uh, enjoying BattleTech has been with the with the literature, you know, yeah. and not the gaming. And so you know that's key. And um, so tell us a little bit about kind of the story, kind of the background that uh, that you've kind of created this this universe in for Redline. Uh, so Redline, again, we wanted to do our own spin on things. And so Redline, the, the whole idea, I mean, it's kind of very grounded with today. What I mean is, I mean, look around, we're starting to see the commercialization of space with Blue Origin, SpaceX. I think Elon Musk's car is on his way to Mars. <laughs> um, so we are not there, but you can see in the future, we are finally ready, willing, and have the ability to, to really push into space. What is that going to look like? What happens? And so Redline kind of divergently goes off from where we are right now. And so it's not a stretch to say that in 10, 15 years, space travel maybe does become common. And we start to have settlements on the moon, which is what's happening with Redline. And we're, people are walking on Mars, and we're harvesting the asteroids and getting those rare Earth metals. I think some of them out there have enough gold that could blow up our entire economy because they're just so dense in that stuff. Well, what is that going to happen? What's, what's that going to do to the world? Uh, and so in Redline, there's this what we call the golden age of space travel, which is like the next 20 years where humanity really is exploring and accelerating with all of the, the technology from space and how that filters into everyday life and space travel becomes common. It's really a, a renaissance, you know, an acceleration, sorry, of technologies that we're seeing now. However, if you know humanity's history, um, you know, even the vastness of space is not big enough um, for everybody to share. And so conflict will break out as people start fighting even over these resources. And you can, you know, because of their accessibility and how hard it is to get, um, that's something you want to fight and protect and secure. And so there, a, a war breaks out. Uh, over the, the, the wealth, the, the wealth that's in space. And quickly, people fall on two sides. You got the United States and its allies versus kind of the, the Russians and the Chinese who kind of team up to meet the, the, or balance out the power of the United States. There's a third faction in the game uh, we call the Brimea, Brazil, India, Middle East Alliance. These are kind of like your developing nations who really aren't fighting and doing the exploring but they're getting the benefit of the resources and they have the most advanced technology. And they're the, actually the ones that invent the Afrites. That's where the Middle Eastern names comes from, right? Uh, but eventually, uh, Afrites are made, they're turned into weapons. It gives the United States who had deployed them first an advantage. Uh, and they're, you know, there's this big battle on the moon and they're actually able to kind of expel the Chinese and Russian governments. They can't keep a foothold on the earth anymore after they lose this big battle on the moon and they're forced kind of into exile on Mars. So that's where our two factions come from. We have what's called the Crimson Pact of Mars, which is a merging of kind of Russian and Chinese governments in exile. 
Um, just so happened it's the red planet, so hey, go figure. And then you got the United States uh, that kind of creates a new version of like the United Nations because they're like the de facto power now. China and Russia are gone. Uh, eventually the Brimea Alliance will do an exodus because they're just sick and tired of all this fighting. So they, uh, they disappear one day. Uh, they develop faster than light technology uh, called the B drive and they just disappear in all these advanced ships and where they go, uh, we don't know, and I don't know if they'll come back, but they had pretty advanced technology, and they just disappear. And so um, the United States formed what's called the United Nations of Earth, which is their allies, and now they have to kind of garrison and protect and patrol the Earth, um, but you got a lot of angry populations that were left behind, and so they're spread very, very thin uh, and not, not very strong, actually. They have control over the globe, I guess you could say. They're just spread very thin because they're kind of like a peacekeeping force. Gotcha. Okay. No, that's awesome. It's good. It's good to have that background. So, so are we getting novels? Are we getting novels in the in the future? We we actually we so we were looking into stories. Yeah. Um, and that's something we would like to do. So kind of, you got you got plans for things that you want to do in the future, new factions, and and you got to start small, and so. You know, those ideas just got to get pushed aside. Uh, yeah. but we, uh, we made technical readouts for some of the Ifrits because that's something I always grew up loving as a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, like I said, we, we've, got, we've got a story for all of them. And it's, you know, we, digital readouts is what we call them, of course. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you know we're, we're working on that because we, we do want to build the lore. As you said, story is very important. It helps build that connection, your identity, with each faction, each characters. Um, that was a big part of me growing up with the Altec, and so we want to make sure that's part of our launch. Awesome. Well, it's, um, you know, going back to going back to the Kickstarter, um, you know, the, uh, you know, we're coming up close. I'm going to try to kick this out quick for you. So we get a little bit of exposure, hopefully drive some interest if anybody's watching and is, uh, wants to kind of dive into that, to that Kickstarter and help back it. Uh, we're coming up uh, uh, September 4th kind of is the, the deadline there. And, um, you know, what, uh, you know, what kind of the options are, you know, people have for kind of backing or what are kind of the, uh, the, the benefit levels that people can look into when they're up in there? Yeah, so we got a couple days left. Uh, go check out the Kickstarter on, uh, or the Redline Kickstarter, the Redline Kickstarter campaign on Kickstarter. We have a lot of great options for backers that want to try and back our game. The base game is only $35, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's core set. It comes with two decks, all the dice, token, everything you need for a two-player game. So you don't need to go and buy separate things. Uh, we have miniatures of the Afrites. Ooh, you don't need you them for the game. You don't need them for the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but again, we know that uh, you know that the designs are really cool, and there's a lot of maybe tabletop players, so they're yeah, yeah. scale. Uh, again, our designer used to design BattleTech mechs for Catalyst. Oh, I like it. So, yeah, that's awesome. I know. Uh, you know, I love. You know, those the custom mechs are great. I know that uh, Derek over at Aries Games does a good job. He has a couple of kind of his own line of, of uh, custom mechs, and so. You know, you said those are those are right at Battletech scale. If people wanted to, you know, our six millimeter, six 28, millimeter scale. 28 millimeter, I think is what it is, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. There is a special uh, epoxy, uh, so awesome. they're very, very durable. Um, it's, it's actually better than what I think most 3D printers are using right now. That's they're, awesome. They look, they look awesome. Uh, cool. We have um, anime alt art general. So if you play Magic, Commander's a big format right mm -hmm. now, and that's Part of Redline as well as you build your deck around a general. So we got some uh, Kickstarter exclusive um, anime alternate art generals you can get. Um, if you ever wanted to make your own mech, that's one of our high backer levels, but you can actually kind of join the Redline team, work with our designer one-on-one, -on -one, and he's going to help you design and make your, uh, your own personal mech as a 3D model to be part of our game. You're going to get a custom miniature of your design sent to you. And, you know, again, if I was a kid and, and someone told me I could do that, uh, I would be like, in, you know, highway to heaven or stair, stairway. To, yeah. you know, it's, it's a really cool opportunity. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's awesome. That I mean, that's like, that's like con level, you know, quality, you know, from the Battletech one. But, uh, but yeah, the, uh, oh, that, yeah, that's awesome. You know, kind of. And if you were going to like hire process. someone, personally to it's a 3d model file so to, to, to model your own design and to 
print it out, um, you know, that would be pretty expensive. And on top of that, you're going to get red line, you're going to mm -hmm. get generals, you're going to get the miniatures as well. So you, yeah. you get a game on top of like your own personal, you know, mech, which will actually be in the game later on. If you play. So that's, that's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very cool. That's uh, also unique. I love that idea. The um, is the what's your what's your distribution uh, timeline? Is it something? Do you guys have product in hand that you're pushing out, or is you are is there? What the is, game's about ninety percent done right now. We got a lot of the art done. We just need to get maybe a few more things. Um, production. We're aiming for like a May, uh, a May um, shipping date. So we'll see how that goes. Um, it takes a long time to finalize to get proofs of concept to start the actual production and shipping and maybe you heard there's a pandemic going around right now which definitely is messing with shipping all around the world we are shipping around the world and so may uh, gives us a little bit of a cushion we're not like fighting to get it out as soon as possible but just being honest and you know may is what we're aiming for and so that gives us some time for some we're building in some delays if they happen Definitely. Maybe even sooner. We'll see. Because awesome. the game is pretty close to that. Yeah, well, just uh, looking at kind of all the, the graphics and stuff available on the Kickstarter page, you know, there's a, a lot of it fleshed out. It looks really good there. But um, awesome. Well, uh, I'll kind of uh, I'll kind of get a, a little maybe a uh, little commercial ad or quick video uh, to throw up, uh, you know, with this video for kind of people watching that can kind of see it. Uh, you know, but also make sure that they're they're kind of uh, cruising over to the uh, to Kickstarter page, searching uh, Redline. If you just search Redline, you'll find it. it it'll come up. I've I've tried it, but uh, Redline Tactical Card Combat Game, full name. Uh, where else can Where else can people connect with you, Cameron? Where's all your so social media we, tags? Yeah, we got. I, I'm not going to give you all the different ones, but just look up Saving Throw Studios is the name of our studio. Or look up Redline. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, uh, all those different things. So yeah, we're we're out there. You just gotta go. Very cool. Well, I'm I'm ruined for you. I want to see this kind of get through the line, and uh, and definitely I'll uh, I'll kind of get some cards myself and look forward to uh, you know get them on the table maybe uh, next May, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll have some fun with it. But uh, if you if you if you like playing war games, we got you covered. If you like playing card games, Redline has that. Uh, if you like I said are into the story and the lore, we're building that up. Uh, this is not a one and done. That's not the idea. It's an expandable card game. Uh, you don't need, there's no blind boosters. There's no lottery tickets. Uh, the game is built to grow. We have plans for more factions, new expansions, new generals, new decks. Uh, the game is here for the long hauls that we're trying to do. We, we want to build up um, a property and we want to make Redline its own unique thing that players can really get excited about play with their friends and build their own decks. But you gotta start somewhere and so that we wanna be you know, responsible and start small and, and validate the concept first instead of just doing everything at once. Uh, but yeah, please come and check us out. Uh, check out the campaign, we put a lot of work into it. Share it, back it if you can. The days left and we're super, super close. So we're looking forward to the last few days, very strong. Appreciate the opportunity for being on here and sharing some things I've never shared before about Redline. Awesome. And uh, definitely check us out. We appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, well, wonderful. Well, good luck with that. I know, I know Kickstarter is that, you know, my understanding is that they kind of surge in the beginning and surge in the end. So we're, so ready, we're ready for surge number two and, and hopefully people are watching this can, uh, can kind of contribute to that. We're effect. gearing up for the last battle of the campaign. Yeah. Awesome. Like All out awesome. of salt. So. Awesome. I love it. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Cameron.